Uh, the stockings were hung by the chimney with Cher? That doesn't sound right. Well, good, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Scott from the old curiosity shop, and no, I have not adopted five kittens. And I didn't give birth to five children either. But we will talk about these stockings hung by the chimney with care uh, in just a moment. Well, I've got some more things to share with you and some wonderful vintage and antique Christmas items that are going to be available in the old curiosity shop. Now, um, I don't know what time you're watching this. Um, in fact, today is Monday. Is it the 21st or the 22nd? I'm not sure about that. Maybe it's the 22nd, but it's the Monday before Thanksgiving. Now, earlier today, I was making lunch and wrapping some packages and uh, Katie at Vintage and Vinyl went live. I tuned her in. She was making this nasty shrimp, uh, green peas, boiled eggs in jello mold to celebrate her 200, her 2000 subscribers. Now she's put it in the refrigerator and I think tonight at seven o'clock live, she's supposed to sample it and Patrick the trusty huckster is going to join her as well. I'm rushing to get my video out. Hopefully you'll see this and if it's not 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Monday, the Monday before Thanksgiving yet, you'll be able to tune in tonight and see Katie. I don't think that made a whole lot of sense, but I think you know what I'm talking about. Even if you don't get to catch her live, um, you could tune back in some other time. That's Katie at Vintage and Vinyl. I can't wait to see her sample this thing that she made, this 1950s Jell-O mold. Uh, she calls it vomit worthy, worthy. Um, and I w might be inclined to agree with her. So I hope you'll go over and check that out live tonight at 7 um, if you get the opportunity. Now, what I'm going to show you, oh, by the way, if everything isn't listed, I'm feverishly working on it, and it should be listed within the next 12 to 48 hours. But if you see anything here you're interested in, feel free to check out the old curiosity shop. The link to my eBay store is in the description box below. I'm going to start out with what I think is the most amazing find that uh, I have discovered in the past week. This is, this is technically the only antique that I'm going to show you if we stick to uh, 100 years old. And I clearly think that this is 100 years old, and I want to show it to you now. Um, this, I think, was an absolute amazing find. This is a wooden Christmas tree stand, and it probably dates to about 1900, or possibly even the 1890s. And I did ask a couple of folks their opinions, including my former college roommate, who has studied antique Christmas for quite some time, and I, I spoke to a few others, and we're all in agreement that that's that it is 100% original. Let me do my best not to tear up the floor or anything that's on the floor, and let me move up and show this to you. Um, once again, I always say there are better pictures, measurements, and all of that on the eBay site. We'll look at the bottom first, which appears to me to be a uh, hunk of mahogany. This is all original paint on this. It's, uh, it's been, so it's enameled and then it's been shellacked. And we have some old decals in the corners. I think this was factory made and not homemade, but I am not an antique Christmas expert. I promise you I'm gonna hold it still, but let's get to where we can see it says, to all a Merry Christmas. Okay, now, uh, 
what kind of a tree sat down in here? Well, of course, there were a lot of feather trees in those days and other types of um, fabricated trees. So this could have held the, uh, the base of a feather tree. There's no place to put any water in here, as you can see. But also, folks in those days put, didn't put their trees up the day after Halloween and keep them up until Valentine's Day. They might only be up for maybe a week or a few days, maybe just during Advent or an, until Epiphany. So I suppose it's possible that a sapling uh, could have been, not really a sapling, <laughs> but a small tree could be placed down inside or um, maybe some other type of a decoration, but uh, it really does appear to be, and from what everyone is telling me, a wooden Christmas tree stand. I did find this in a rural area in Pennsylvania, and uh, it's very possible that this was factory made somewhere here in Pennsylvania. One of the things that's wonderful to see where um, it was knocked into the wall or something was banged into it. We can see there's a thin coat of plaster or gesso under there, which is applied to the wood before it's actually painted. Um, if, and I, I have no reason to believe at all that this would be anything reproduced, but if it were reproduced, I can't imagine anybody would go to the time to put plaster gesso on it and then paint it. Uh, it has a wonderful, uh, crackled sort of alligatored finish there where the enamel paint has cracked a little bit under the shellac and uh, well I think it's fantastic uh, anytime you find anything with old original paint like this what a find so I'm curious to know I'm going to go ahead and list it as an antique wooden Christmas tree stand, and uh, we have a, is this a general mold? You've seen this guy before. Uh, general Products, Providence, Rhode Island. He is a hard plastic Santa. Okay, there we have the hard plastic uh, general mold Santa, and these come in many different forms. Oftentimes, he's holding a Christmas tree or something else there, but here we just have the Santa in the uh, wonderful hard plastic from the 1950s. Uh, a little bit of paint loss as we, you normally expect, but he's not chipped or cracked. Uh, he, his cord is perfectly fine, and um, I put a new light bulb in there, so that's easy to change when you need to. I think a lot of folks are familiar with this type of Christmas decoration from the 1950s. Probably the 1950s or earlier, maybe even the 1940s. We have a skinny Santa Claus. Let's take a look at him. Boy, he is really, really skinny. Santa, it almost it kind of looks like Fred Astaire in the face a little bit, doesn't he? Uh, yeah, he, he certainly does need to put a few pounds on if, he, if, we, if we like our Santas nice and plump. Now, of course, many of you know that the plump Santa that we think of today is really uh, we have the Coca-Cola company to thank because of their advertising. Santas were not always jolly and round. Many times in the olden days they were skinny. And of course we know they had all different colored outfits and whatnot. But there he is carrying his sack and he's got a little bit of paint loss and he's probably a Japan. I don't see, I don't see that on there. But we'll guess that that's that he's a Japan. There's there's are there are no repairs on him at all. Which is other than the little bit of paint loss, I think it's fantastic that there are no breaks and no repairs on this very uh, trim and fit Santa. He did not lose his gym membership during COVID, did he? Now, sticking with the Christmas, I showed you these a week ago and then never listed uh, it. Here's this wonderful 1950s plastic Santa decoration. And he has a light bulb in the back and an electric cord and an old fashioned Bakelite plug. And even though the box has seen better days, you're getting that as well. So I finally have this listed 
he lights up very well. And uh, there's a few crinkles here and there, but there isn't really any damage to, to speak of. He has a nice classic sort of 1950s face. Oh, and these, I showed you these two. Um, not gonna take them out of this envelope, but there are, and I didn't count them either, um, but there's gotta be at, at least 50 to 100 of these in here. The little uh, lickable, stickable Christmas seals. And uh, if you didn't see me show these off in, oh, a video a few days ago, if you go to the eBay site, you'll be able to see pictures of all the little stickers in there, but I don't really want to take them out. They kind of tend to go all over the place. A few more Christmas things and then we're done. This is just a Christmas, a quick Christmas haul. Here's a big, uh, big Santa head. Uh, and he's a blow mold. Now he's in great shape, he's not faded. There are no splits in him anywhere. Uh, I do not have a spare light bulb cord. They're easy to get, all the craft shops sell them in this area, I suppose in your area as well. So it's easier, it's easy to illuminate him. And he is a, wait a minute. He is a gen, general foam, I think. Yeah, he's a general foam. Okay, general foam made in USA. Uh, blow mold Santa head for your front door. And I think I've got two of these. I'm just gonna sell this one right now. I don't know where the other one is. I can't find it. Uh, but if I can dig him out, we'll, we'll be able to have two of these. But for now, just have this one. I haven't measured him yet, so, but he's a big one. These I'm probably going to keep because I know a lot of folks, as well they should, get squeamish uh, around antique electronics. Well, I'm pretty confident that these will, will be okay, and I never leave any of my antique lights unattended. I certainly wouldn't plug these in and then go caroling for a couple of hours. But um, they, these are perfectly safe to use, but I will probably keep these. They're, now these are old, as you can see. They're probably pre-war. We have these wonderful molded bottoms here, which uh, is not Bakelite. This is some, this is some other mold, uh, molded type of a, of a uh, not resin, but a synthetic. And someone at some point drove nails through, through this. Uh, you'd split Bakelite, and I think they did that so that these could be nailed to a windowsill. Now this is Clemco, C-L-E-M-C-O. Yeah, and we have cardboard sleeves here for the candles with the wax and the wonderful reflectors on the top, which someone may have added. I know Noma made a lot of these reflectors, but there they are. Um, and they have the original old wiring. Um, I actually needed to replace the plugs. So I replaced the plugs myself. Um, both of the plugs in this case had been smashed, smashed. I'm not sure why, but, um, again, this wiring is just fine. And I like the old wiring and I like old looking plugs. But as I said, a lot of folks would be probably not comfortable plugging these in. I have no problem. I mean, everything in this place is, is well, you can imagine. <laughs> so, I have old wiring. Okay, one more Christmas thing and then some beautiful glass that I have never shown before by a maker whom I have never featured before. Is it whom when you say maker? I suppose so. Let me shift here for a minute because if I stay in one position too long on this floor, oh my goodness. I have some Christmas candles to show you. Phenomenal condition. You're gonna flip over this. First of all, it's always a treat when you have an original box. And there it is. A wonderful Japan box from the 50s. 
in really good condition. I mean, that's good condition for a box. We're a little wonky up here and there's a little bit of something spilled on that, who knows what. But in terms of a 1950s box, this is good, 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 good. All right, let's open it up and even better, there they are, tucked inside. Let's not have them drop out of there. Noel, look at them, down there in their little Excelsior beds. They sleep all year long, just waiting for Christmas time. And guess what? Chicken butt. You get the candles as well. Now, let's see here. What's really funny about these candles, and, and I, oops, I'm sure a lot of you are going to be able to predict, since these uh, wind up in someone's hot attic, we can't really use these candles because uh, they have melted into sort of amalgamated, you know, sort of hunk of a candle cake there. So there they are. I'm going to include them just for posterity's sake, the original candles. I wouldn't suggest lighting these, but that's the real thing right there in this tiny little box. The amazing thing is no chips, no cracks, no breaks, no repairs, no paint loss. These are as they were when they first came out of this box. Let's pull them out and just take a look at them uh, one at a time. There she is. Okay, there's Miss N. And I think on the bottom, oh my goodness, we have the maker, which is... Milk, Relco, Relco, R-E-L-C-O, Relco, no Relco, no, yeah, Re Relco, uh, Japan, Relco Japan is what it says on the bottom. So we just saw the letter N, and then we have the letter O place for the candles there. Come on out of here. You sleep all year long. Okay, there's E. She's looking a little surprised, isn't she? And then finally, um, the letter L. All right. So, uh, and that one has a, a different kind of a Japan sticker on the bottom and there we can see the original uh, box. I was amazed when I found this set and I am delighted to pass it on and I hope it will become uh, a new tradition in someone else's home very soon. Now the last thing I'd like to share with you today are two beautiful glass cups and saucers and uh, they're absolutely stunning. I uh, am happy to show them to you now and uh, offer them for sale. When I saw these cups and saucers, I was digging around a flea market and they were sitting in a box. They reminded me a little bit of um, the Delphite color that was so popular during the Depression era, but I certainly recognize these as not being Delphite and not being actually uh, antique or old glass at all. I, I didn't recognize the maker. It's, it's making a little bit of noise. And, but it's this wonderful opalescent, semi-transparent, can you see me through there? Uh, blue glass, it's just absolutely beautiful glass. And there were three of them. So I'm keeping one for myself and I'm selling this set of two. I love the closed thumb hole here. And uh, do you know who made these and where they were made? Well, it's actually Murano, Italian glass. And I have to admit, I'm usually not the biggest fan of the, you know, multicolored, heavily decorated Murano animals and all that stuff. I know, I know a lot of folks are, but it does, it's not necessarily my cup of tea. This is my cup of tea. Now these are all clearly marked E-F-F-E-T-R-E, -E -E, Murano. And you can actually go on to their website, which I did, and if you buy these from me, if you want more to add, you can actually go on their website and add to your collection. 
So I'm going to auction these two cups and saucers off. I don't know that you'll be able to see the mark on the bottom. I think you might be able to right there. See that? And then Murano on the bottom. Okay, so the saucers are marked. And then of course the cups are marked as well. So, wow, they're just, they're really pretty and uh, showing them off here really doesn't do, do justice, I don't think. So you, you could start a whole new collection with these. Mm -hmm. So, beautiful handmade Murano glass available right now in the old curiosity shop. I don't know that I'll ever be able to find anything like this again schlepping around a New Jersey flea market. And, and finally, five vintage 1950s felt Christmas stockings, which we have uh, hanging by the uh, chimney with care, not with share. Uh, let me turn my bones around and um, we'll do a zoom in on these in a minute. But um, they're all, they have different, here we have a Christmas tree. And actually each one is different. The graphics are, are slightly different on, uh, on each one. So no two appear to be identical. And um, they're a little uh, dirty at the top in some cases and they need to be ironed maybe. And I think it's possible, well, it was the 50s and everybody had nicknames and sometimes people gave silly nicknames to their children, but I almost wonder if these were for pets. Now, the only one that throws me off is this one over here. That one says at the top, Pappy. P-A-P-Y. Well, you think that's the, the father in the house. And then the next one is Jeannie, J-E-A-N-N-E, -N -N -E, or Janine, G-E-A-N-E, -E, I guess, Jeannie. Maybe Pappy and Jeannie are husband and wife, or significant others of some sort. Uh, and then we have their three children, Skipette, Nipper, and twerp. See what I mean? You think these are dogs? Well, Nipper, obviously, we know Nipper, the, uh, the famous uh, RCA dog. Uh, skip at S-K-I-P dash E-T. And then twerp, T-W-E-R-P. I don't know. Pappy, Genie, Skip at Nipper, and twerp. But they are in wonderful condition. There's no funny attic smell or moldy smell. They're not ripped any, anywhere or even stained. This one, Pappy, has a little stain at the top. But they're charming, classic felt stockings from the 1950s. And all five of these are being, are, will be kept together and sold uh, as, as one lot. Well, folks, that's it for now. If you can, be sure to catch Katie tonight. 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, and let's watch her eat this nasty jello mold, and Patrick as well. Now, if you'll excuse me, since I'm going to be headed to a very nice Thanksgiving Day dinner in a few days, I need to go and get the shine off of my blue serge pants. But until then, next time, I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop saying, thanks for watching, wait for the cat. So long for now.